Welcome back savages to another video. In this video we're going to answer the question do helium amplifiers really work? So the amplifier that I've purchased for this experiment is a CalBoost 17 dBi amp and the frequency this particular one is running on is between 863 to 870 megahertz. So that should cover the EU and the UK range of frequencies. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to unbox it. I'm going to show you what's included inside the package. Then what we're going to do is connect it up to a power consumption meter just to see how much power it uses while it's in standby. And then what we're going to do is check the power consumption afterwards just to see what it's like in operation. So then what we're going to do is just leave it in situ for two days and see whether it does answer the question, does the amplifier make any difference to the number of beacons and rewards that it gets? So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with the unboxing. So starting with the unboxing, first of all, uh, this is the package that it comes in. It's quite plain. Uh, it does have the model number and the CalBoost logo on the top there, and it mentions the frequency as well. So I'll leave a link in the description to this particular item. Just be aware that when you're purchasing it, make sure you get the right frequency for your region. So the first thing you'll see is the instruction manual right there. That's great. That's the CalBoost amplifier itself. Made of metal, quite heavy, really well made, very impressed with that. So you've got the antenna end on this side, which is where your antenna will connect to. And then you've got the flam end on this one, which will go to your Nebra Miner just on there. It's also a DC in, which will go to your power adapter right there. And that's about it. So power adapter, USB cable to the DC in for that. So that'll go in there. And then they're just giving you some mounting screws right there. And that'll go in the four corners there. There's cutouts. So if you're going to mount it somewhere, you can just use those four holes already pre-drilled into the cal boost. So the next thing we're going to do is just connect this up to the power adapter and just see how much power it consumes just in idle mode. So here we go, power adapter is plugged in, connected to the amplifier, nothing else is connected to it, just in standby it's using 0 0.9 watts of power which is brilliant, hardly anything. But I'd expect that because it's not actually in operation. It might be a different story when it's connected up to the live system but we'll find that out in a bit. So in terms of amps, 0 0.007 amps. So next up, let's go and connect it to the real thing and see how it performs. So when the CalBoost amplifier arrived, I did think I might have a problem with connecting it directly to the Nebra and the antenna. And that's exactly what's happened. So basically the connector types between the minor output and the CalBoost ends going into it, and obviously the antenna as well, are all different. So I've purchased these converter kits, and I'll leave a link in the description of these, and these will basically allow you to connect the Nebra directly to the CalBoost, and then from the cal boost to the antenna. So let's go ahead and connect this up. So this is a connector we're going to be using to connect the Nebra to the cal boost. And I've gone for this 90 degrees angle one. So going into the Nebra, it's going to be the female end, that one right there. So that's going to go into there. And then the male end of this one, that one there, is going to go into the cal boost right there like that. So let's connect that up. So this is what it looks like when it's connected. That's your minor, that's a cal boost. That's the 90 degree angle. So the next adapter we're going to use is a straight through one like that. The end going into the cal boost is a male one. Like that. And then on the other end, the one that goes into the antenna is also a male end as well. So we're just going to screw this on here and then the other end will be connected to the antenna. So there we go, we've got the antenna connected to the cal boost. Cal boost is connected to the minor. So we've got the red light on showing that there's power to the amplifier. So the last thing we're going to do in terms of setup is have a look at the power consumption just to see what it's like when the system's live like this. So as you can see, it's just less than one watt using the amplifier, which is great. In terms of amps, 
0 0.007. So that's quite impressive. That just shows that even when we've got the amp attached, it's only using at the most about one watt of power. So the next thing we're going to do is just leave it for a day or two and then we'll have a look at the helium charts to see how this has performed. So here we are several days later looking at a helium tracker chart. So the bars in white on the left hand side were originally when we were mining HNT. Then we transitioned to mining IoT on the helium network. So everything in green is IoT. So as you can see the rewards on IoT were pretty similar to HNT. But then we fitted the amp and as you can see it's almost doubled in rewards for the last several days that I've had it connected. So to come full circle and to answer the question, does a helium amplifier work? The answer is categorically yes. As you can see from this chart, rewards have doubled and then some since I've had it connected. So I'll leave a link in the description to all the parts I used in this video. So as an added bonus, if any of you out there are actually dual mining, which is basically helium mining and crank at the moment it also improves the crank signal as well because you're going to be using a boosted antenna so anyway i hope this helps you out thanks for watching and i'll see you savages on the next one